guys are amazing. Not only have you guys taken all this awesome support, I'm Tim, I'm Tom Finlayson's brother, and you stand out here in the rain just to support this family and support all the friends and stuff. You guys are awesome. I'm just, it's, I'm just overwhelmed with what happened. I like something Tiki said when she was talking. This was not God's plan for Kevin. This was not the plan of God. There is a thing, and, and, and the other, the minister, Brother Sykes, said, because there's a good God, there's a bad devil. And the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But then Joseph said something when he was thrown in prison, when he was thrown in the pit. He said, what the devil meant for my destruction, God is turning it around for my good. Take that devil. You created some vacancies in hell today. Take that devil. And so what you did to try to bust up this family, what you did to try to rob our faith, you lose. God wins. And these people win. Amen. Amen. tries to use disappointment to try to take that and say, oh, yeah, well, if your faith works so good, how come Kevin's in heaven? I don't understand all the answers, but here's what I know. When that disappointment tries to come in, and this is why it's important, because your heart is where you believe God. And there's only so much room in your heart. And so, where, where you, the Word of God is sown in your heart for salvation, where the Word of God is sown in your heart for healing and miracles, disappointment tries to crowd out that room and all of a sudden now builds a case on why we can't believe God this time. I don't understand everything, but here's what you've got to do. You've got to put in the bedrock of your theology, your study about God, that God is good. I don't understand this, but God is good. I don't understand how I feel this way, but God is good. It looks to me like you could have maybe helped me not feel this way, but one thing I know, God, is you are good. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And we put a guard over this family's heart right now that even though the, the, the hope was deferred, their heart will not be sick because God made this family and God made all of his friends a people to do miracles, signs and wonders, create other vacancies in hell. And so we deal right now with disappointment and we declare we don't understand what happened, but we know that you're good. Amen. And, we, and the next time there's a crisis, we're not going to let what happened this time. Keep us from pressing in for God's best in Jesus' name. And when that happens to me, here's the one thing I've learned, and I'm going to read my scripture and we're done. Is that when I don't understand something about God, there's a book in the Bible called the Book of Psalms. And I get in there and I just begin to read the Book of Psalms until I find my voice. Because in the Book of Psalms, 
is every human emotion known to man. Anger, jealousy, bitterness, resentment, anger at God. And you sit there and you read those psalms out loud. You read them out loud. You walk around in your room. You walk around wherever you are. And all of a sudden, you find that scripture. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help comes from, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And all of a sudden, that, the Bible changes font on you. And all of a sudden, that Bible leaps up off the page. And that's, that's how I feel right now. And you keep on reading. And all of a sudden, somewhere in there, the psalmist is going to give you the answer to all this disappointment and discouragement you feel there. So spend time the next few days, weeks, and months reading those psalms until you find your voice. Let me read you a scripture. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now this, but behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is in sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Heavenly Father, you are the Lord and God of all peace. In the Hebrew, your name is Shalom, which means nothing missing and nothing broken. You can take what the enemy meant to destroy this family and turn it around for our good. We establish this day around this graveside that it's a bedrock of our theology that you are good and there is no bad in you, Lord. We may never understand why. And I may not understand what's going on, but the one thing I cannot live without, I may never know why, but I've got to have peace. I can't leave here without your peace. I administer the peace of heaven in this crowd right now. I release the peace of heaven right now. It's the peace that passes all understanding. It's the peace that does, it says, I should be falling all apart, but i got a knowing on the inside of me that everything is going to be all right. Almighty God, it is you we hope in. It is you that we run in today. In our time of trouble, you can only lead us from victory. You can only lead us to change this defeat into victory. Now, Lord, we give you the praise, and we give you the glory, and we give you the honor for this right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. And we make a covenant with this family right now. For the next 14 days, every time... When we're doing our job, when we see your face before us, we covenant with you now by the lifting up of our hand. We promise you we'll stop whatever we're doing. We'll say a prayer for you. We covenant with you now. I want yeah. your family to open up your yeah. eyes right now. We covenant yeah. with you now for the next 14 days. Yeah. Every time we see your face by the yeah. uplifting of our hand, we promise to stop what we're doing and spend time praying for you, spend time ministering to you, yeah. because you are not alone yeah. in the name of the Lord. Now, Father, we lift up that other hand now. And we praise you for what you've done this day for this family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What has to be done is what we're here today to do. And I've had the opportunity to be a pastor to Kevin and Derek and their family. Uh, but what I want to do today is represent our pastor and do this part of the service for him. Uh, for you guys, it might be kind of new to what do you do at a graveside? You just did it. You take a moment, you get uplifted, and you hear some songs, and, and you sing and worship God. And in this part of the service, uh, we are committing this body back to the ground where it came from. But everything we love about Kevin, everything lives forever. And it's in eternity with Jesus as I speak. So what we're uh, putting to rest today is simply 
that earth suit. Yeah. You know, that thing we're toting along. Some of us tote more than others. Some of us tote <laughs> differently than what we used to tote. But everything we love about Kevin is with Jesus and will live forever. And I commit, if you would, if you'd bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit this body back to the dust where it came. And God, I'm so thankful that the spirit of this young man, his joy, yes. peace, and righteousness yes. in the Holy Spirit, Jeez. and in his life and life more abundant, that he's experiencing now everything we've read, everything we've dreamed, everything we've sang about, and everything we want for eternity, he is experiencing right now. And Lord, we thank you for that. So I commit this body back to where it comes in Jesus' name. And like many of you, when I got this call, the first thing I said was no. Didn't happen. The next thing I did was I just had to shut the door and leave my office and put a note on it. Do not bother me. I didn't even put a note. I just left. People wondered what was going on. And then I did the next thing that I felt like doing. I cried. And I wept. And then from that, the next thing I did was start thinking about a lot of good things that I enjoyed with this young man and with his family. And then from that, the next thing I did, and I've been doing ever since, I got that call just singing and just worshiping. And from the ride home last night with my family over at the church to my ride up today to the car to the service with what you guys sing, I just continued to sing. You say, why do you do that? Because that's a way you can express all that stuff you got going on on the inside in worship. And this one I just kept singing over and over and over. So it's just a chorus. I thought we could do it together. If you don't know it, listen. You just grab right in or just move your lips and act like you know it. Enjoy it. But it starts.